This is the Context Port and today we are testing a used R9 290 to see if it's a bargain or e-waste. <music> Buying a new GPU these days is virtually impossible without having very deep pockets. Therefore, I instead tested a GPU that you should be able to pick up for less than $200 USD. Uh, the 4GB of VRAM means you can't mine Ethereum with this GPU, which means prices uh, haven't gone completely out of whack, which is the case with other GPUs. So I tested this Sapphire Tri-X version in a few modern and uh, or more popular games with a Ryzen R5 5600X on a B550M Pro 4 motherboard from ASRock. I used 16GB of DDR4 memory running a dual channel at 3600MHz with fairly loose XMP timings. This is a pretty low power GPU, uh, relatively speaking, so overclocking memory doesn't really make a difference in G these uh, GPU bound tests. I only tested two resolutions, 1080p and 1440p, because based on the edge age of this card and the 4 gigabytes uh, frame, uh, the 4 gigabytes of VRAM, 4K is not really an option, uh, with a few exceptions. Let's just skip right into it with Anno 1800 at medium settings. We see that the R9 290 is able to deliver a decent playable experience with 78.7 .7 frames per second on average. Frame times are dipping under 60 frames per second, but that's not a big concern in this title. Increasing the resolution to 1440p and performance takes a bit of a hit. We are now down to 50.4 frames per second average, still with medium settings. I would still say this is playable, in this title at least. Next up is the AAA title, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, results here are a bit disappointing, with low settings we are only getting 56.6 frames per second on average. You'd have to lower the resolution to breach 60 frames per second. I would say it's just about playable, but it's not a smooth experience. Moving to 1440p and we are down to 44 frames per second on average. And yeah, this is not a good card for the, this is not a good card for the latest AAA titles. Moving on to my favorite racing game, Assetto Corsa Competizione, with medium settings, the render scaling is set to 85%, so keep that in mind when looking at these numbers. Racing games such as this requires 60 frames per second, in my opinion. At 1080p, the R9 290 is able to get us there at 75 frames per second on average. The frame times are dipping slightly on the 60, but this is playable, no problem. At 1440p, however, we see an average of 59.4 frames per second average, but there are dips down to 31.9 frames per second average, which means that your frame rate can suddenly drop right at a crucial moment, which means I don't really think this is uh, playable at 1440p with medium settings. You will need to drop those down to low. Moving on again to a title that 60 frames per second is almost a requirement, Apex Legends. Uh, this fast-paced shoot shooter, this fast-paced, this fast-paced battle royale game, greatly benefits from uh, 60 frames per second or demands 50 frames, or demands 60 frames per second. Uh, with the mostly medium settings and some low, we are getting 72.7 frames per second on average at 1080p. There are dips below 60 frames per second, but I would say this is playable, barely at least. At 1440p, we drop below 60 frames per second, I would, and I would say that the game is not playable at uh, this resolution with these settings. Battlefield 5 is a good-looking World War II FPS game, and it runs very well on the R9 290. 1080p high settings is very playable at 84.8 frames per second average, with frame times well above 60 frames per second. At 1440p with high settings, you will still get over 60 frames per second average, just, but dropping, but dropping down to medium will give you a slight boost to performance. I would say this is playable at 1080p high and 1440p medium. Uh, the next title is Cyberpunk 2077. The R9 is struggling with this game at 1080p, with low settings we are only seeing 48.9 frames per second average, and it's not a pleasant experience at all. Obviously, at 1440p, still with low settings, things get even worse, and I would say this game is not really playable at 1440p, and 1080p is not great either. Doom Eternal is next, and this game pretty much runs on anything that has the VRAM for it. 
At 1080p high settings, but medium shadows and texture filtering, we are getting decent performance from the R9 290 with 91.2 frames per second damage and lows well above 60. Moving to 1440p, we have 63.3 frames per second damage, but those frame times can really mess up the fast paced action. Uh, moving to low settings or enabling dynamic res resolution does solve this issue. Next up is Rainbow Six Siege. The game runs great on pretty much everything, really. With Ultra settings and Vulcan, with the R9 290 we are seeing 103.8 frames per second average with great frame times, and this is at 100% render scaling. Moving to 1440p and dropping to high settings, we are still seeing great performance at 95 per second average and frame times well above 60. Well, well above 60. Shadow the Tomb Raider is putting a lot of stress on the R9 290. At 1080p medium settings, we are still shy of 60 frames per second average. Uh, I would say it's still playable, uh, but if you want to get some better performance, you can drop down to low settings, I suppose, or drop a few of the settings down. At 1440p, we are down to 40.2 frames per second average, and it's very much not a smooth experience at this point. Last game is Call of Duty Warzone. Here we use whatever settings the game recommends for the R9 290, which is basically all low. At 1080p, the game is plenty playable. At 93.2 frames per second average, with decent frame times, you could definitely play this game like this, and most people drop the settings in this title anyway. At 1440p, it was also pretty playable actually, with 75.1 frames per second average, with ok frame times. There could be some areas where the R9 290 would struggle, but seemed fine. But it seemed fine in my playthrough, so yeah, that's nice. There you have it then, as long as you are not looking to play above 1080p or play the latest AAA titles at a better smooth 60 frames per second, the R9 290 should have you covered. But before you jump onto eBay and grab the first one you can find, keep this in mind. AMD's new FSR technology, which is their DLSS competitor sort of, will not support the i9 series GPUs. Support will stop at the Polaris cards. That means a used RX 470 or 570 4GB, uh, which should perform on par or better than the R9 290, would have an easier time in games using FSR. Image quality concerns aside, I would much rather get a 470 or 570 to get FSR than the older R9 290. The Polaris cars will have better longevity because of FSR, a fact cemented by AMD since they have now deemed the R9 290 and other GCN products legacy hardware, which means they will not get any more driver updates. That's it for now, thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll be checking out FSR now, thank you. Again, for watching, goodbye.